<coughs> G'day, David Seymour with a new session of the nitty gritty of selling. The subject today is negotiating your fees and your commissions, particularly aimed at real estate people. Now, if you are a um, salesperson and you work for a discount agency, well, so be it, I guess. You know, if you can run your business at that level, that's fine. And I'm not bagging that. What I do really take a sort of disliking to is salespeople who when they get confronted by a vendor before they've even got the listing saying, hey, Agent X will discount the commission by X amount of money and you know, they'll drop it by 5,000 for argument's sake or whatever the fees may be. And you as a salesperson just turn around and go, oh yeah, I'll match it. If I was the vendor, then I would be asking myself why either of those agents who are prepared to drop their commissions before they've even got the listing, why they would do that and how good are their negotiation skills when it comes to getting me the best price for my property. If you're a sales professional, be a sales professional. Don't be a discounter just to get the business. You should be getting the business based on how good your results are in the past, how successful um, your process of marketing properties has been. That's what you sell the vendor on, not on price to start with. Now there's ways around it and we'll talk about that in a minute. The thing being is that if you've dropped your pants to start with, it gives you nothing, nothing in the way of your, in your toolbox to get a deal across the line later. Because all now all you're focused on is that you want to get this sold so you can get your commission um, as soon as possible. The next inherent default with anyone who starts slashing commissions left, right and centre just to get business is this, that you go along and see John and Mary vendors and they say, will you discount your commission? You go, yeah, sure, I'll drop it down to this. And then they do sign up with you and you do go through the process and you do get their house sold and that's all well and good. But the problem is if they refer somebody, say they refer their brother or their cousin to you, he's going to expect a discount as well. And then it becomes a never-ending um, circle of all you're doing is listing and selling on discounted rates. And you've done yourself out of thousands and thousands of dollars worth of commissions. Why would you do that? Why would you discount just for the sake of getting business? You've got to be better than this. You've got to actually focus on what it is that you're so good at in the way of getting properties sold. If your only strength at getting listings is because you're prepared to discount the commissions before you've even started, personally I believe your real estate career could be relatively short-lived in the scale of things. It's not the way to get business. You need to be um, looking at how it is that you sell properties, how, how it is that you market and how you get properties sold for good prices as a selling point, not because you're a discounter. As I said, once you start discounting, it's a never-ending spiral downwards and it's going to be hard to climb it out of it because you'll get a reputation as being the discounter and you do not want that reputation. You want to be people, uh, the agent of choice that people list with because you get the job done, because you're a great person to work with, because you're open and you communicate well, your marketing has strength. Um, and the pricing that you sell properties for and the time frames that you do it in are all, you know, noteworthy. Not because you're a discounter. If you are a discounter currently, stop it. Seriously, stop it. You need to move up into the real world of selling real estate and doing the job well. Some of the things that I would say to people when they said, hey, will you discount your commissions down? And this is before I've even started. I would say to them, Mr. And Mrs. Vendor, would you go to work tomorrow and take a pay cut voluntarily because your boss, you know, is having a hard time or because your boss just thinks he's paying you too much? Would you take a discount on your or take a reduction in your uh, salary or your wages? Most people will say no. And most people, if you ask them, could you afford to work for less or would you go to work for less than what you are currently? Most people will say no. And you say, well, that's one reason, well, I'm not prepared to reduce my fees before I've even started 
um, and got the commitment from you. The next one would be along the lines of, hey, if Agent X is prepared to reduce his fees before he's even started with you, how good is he going to be at negotiating a really good price for you? The next one would be, do you believe that all cars are of the same value? Do you believe that all schools are as good as um, each other? Do you believe doctors are all as good as each other? Do you believe lawyers are all worth the same amount of money? Do you believe that all products, you know, all TVs or whatever it is, are all should be all priced the same? And most people are going to say no. And you go, and that's why I don't discount my fees, because I'm worth more than the others, because it's all about the process that we're going to take you through, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, to get you a great result, and not about the fees initially. And of course, you can say to the vendors, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, you're asking me to drop my commission by uh, $10,000 or $5,000 or X percent or whatever it may be. When it comes to signing a sale and purchase agreement, are you going to be willing to drop your expectations by 10 or 15 percent um, because I haven't done my job well enough? Or are you going to ask me to go back and work a bit harder to get you a better price? Now most of them are going to say, well, we'd expect you to work a bit harder and get a better price. And so with that, you can say, well, that's why I'm not dropping my fees straight away either because I expect to be able to just work for you for a fair and reasonable uh, commission and I will do my utmost to get you the best price we can. But if you expect me to drop my fees, then I expect you to drop your expectations as well. Now, that sounds pretty harsh and it's all in the way you deliver it, but sometimes it's quite a hard hitting fact. Why should you take a cut if they're not prepared to take a cut? So, you know, work on that side of things as well. Just, um, you just need to perfect the actual script itself. What I've just said is quite raw and probably a bit blunt for some people to use, but hey, you can, you can uh, manipulate that sort of intention into a phrase that you're comfortable with and it does drive it home with the vendor. The next part of it is same with marketing fees. You know, there's agents out there go, oh, list with us and we'll give you $1,000 worth of marketing for free. Well, to me, it's a little bit desperate. I, I believe that the vendor needs to have skin in the game. And that skin in the game is by the way of actually marketing. Because unless you actually sell the property, you're not going to get paid anything anyway. So the vendor needs to take some responsibility for their marketing. Um, and that's something that down the track, again, if you felt... Um, at the point of sale that there was something that you could do to help them out in the way of giving them a rebate or something Well, that's something you could negotiate at that point But at the very start of why would you put a thousand dollars on the table if you haven't even got a deal to negotiate with? You could be burning money up Before you've even got a deal and your vendors are just gonna go. Oh, well cool They paid a thousand dollars towards the marketing. I might not accept the sale price No skin off my nose and so off they go and you have just spent a thousand dollars and got nothing for it. So why would you spend that money up front as a salesperson when um, there's absolutely no commitment from the vendor? I think it's something that you can negotiate later if you need to, but in the meantime, as I said, the vendor needs to have some skin in the game and having a, an investment in marketing is one of those things. But to get that investment in the marketing, Here's the thing, you've actually got to show them what they're going to get. Not just go, hey, give me $1,000 or $2,000 for marketing. Actually have a, a detailed plan of how your marketing is going to work, whether it's going on your company website, where it's going on uh, Trade Me, on realestate.co, what size the adverts are going to be, how many adverts are going to be in the local uh, newspaper, or property guide, um, property press, those sort of things, what size adverts they're going to be, what is social media going to um, involve, uh, professional photos, drone shots, videos, all those sort of things. And if you can actually produce a document that shows them what they're getting for their money, then they should be able to buy into it. And that is really the key to it, is getting them to buy into it. Again, it comes down to your negotiation skills. If you need to work on your negotiation skills, then do so. But don't give up everything just because somebody put some acid on you. Because as I said, how's it going to look when you go to actually sell the house? Um, are you just going to 
get the first offer and convince the vendor to take it because you want to get paid or are you going to go back and negotiate harder and get more money it's all about the negotiations don't just give up or give in work on it negotiate david seymour for the nitty-gritty of selling